You remember that famous Disney movie, Dumbo, the one about the flying elephant? Well, it turns out that bar takers and Dumbo the flying elephant have something very important in common. Stick around and we'll explain more. Hi, I'm Jackson Mummy, the owner and founder of Celebration Bar Review. And for over 25 years, I've been helping people pass their bar exams, people just like you. If you'd like to know more about how we've helped thousands of people to pass the bar and how we can help you, check out the links following today's Today video. I want to talk about big ears. Yeah, I got big ears, but they're nothing like the big ears that I want to talk about today. Because today we're going to talk about a classic movie from 1941 called Dumbo. Remember Dumbo the Elephant and his really big ears? And the relationship between our animated flying elephant Dumbo and a bar taker, particularly when it comes to writing, is really, really close. And so I want to start by just summarizing the movie. I've, I've, I've told students for years to watch this movie, and I know that as we get closer uh, to exam day, you just don't have the time to sit down and watch a movie. So I'm going to summarize it for you in a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to tell you why I think it's so appropriate. You might remember Dumbo as the elephant who uh, is trying to fly uh, or just trying to, to survive in the circus, and he's made fun of, and all sorts of bad things happen to him. Well, he is befriended in the movie by a little mouse named Timothy. And uh, the relevant part of the story is that one day, Dumbo and Timothy find themselves up in a tree, and they are being badgered by a gang of crows. Now, Timothy, the mouse, is completely at a loss as to how they got up into the tree. Um, I'm not entirely sure, certain that I remember how that happened in the, the storyline, but in any event, there they are up in the tree. But then Timothy hits on an obvious reason. They got there because Dumbo's ears acted like wings. It made him a flying elephant. Now, the idea of an elephant that can fly is mocked by the crows, and they laugh and they, they, they make fun of Dumbo. Well, this causes Timothy, the mouse, to lose his temper, and he tells the crows everything that Dumbo has been through. And if you remember, it's a really sad start to this movie. It's kind of a Bambi-like start, uh, Dumbo being ripped away from his mom and, and being uh, made fun of. And I mean, it's just really kind of uh, bullying 101, if you will. And as a result of Timothy's story, the crows change their uh, attitude, and they decide to give Dumbo a magic feather to give him the confidence to fly. Okay, magic feather, sure. So sure enough, with this new magic feather, Dumbo can fly. And Timothy plans to have him surprise the audience uh, at the next evening's show when they do their performance with these clowns who've been really cruel to Dumbo all along. Well, Dumbo goes through his performance and he actually gets up in the air and he's flying and he's got the magic feather in his nose, but then the, the feather starts to tickle him and he starts to sneeze. And as he starts to sneeze, of course, his uh, trunk unravels and the feather falls out. He loses the magic feather entirely. Dumbo begins to panic and Timothy, who's up on Dumbo's head basically, pleads with Dumbo to fly even without the feather. He tells him he can do it. And in the nick of time, Dumbo manages to fly. And the cool part of it is he ridicules the clowns, he pelts the other elephants who made fun of him with peanuts, and he becomes famous as the flying elephant. And the last scene of the movie is a real heartbreaker or, or heartwarmer, if you will. Dumbo's mother has been released to the rear of a special train car and Dumbo lands in her arms and everybody lives happily ever after in circus land. Okay, well, Jackson, <laughs> what the heck does that have to do with anything? Well, when I talk about bar essay writing and studying for the bar exam. I find that I've got a lot of people, a lot of students that really are like Dumbo. You know, they're in what is sometimes called uh, a hypnotic trance about their skills or abilities. Paul Sheely at Learning Strategies calls the process of dealing with this dehypnotizing. And he says that um, his belief, and I would agree with him, is that we're all born as geniuses. But what we've done over time is that we've accepted negative suggestions that negate or limit our access to that potential, that genius that's within us. And so what we need to actually be able to do in essence is not to hypnotize ourselves, it's not to go into a trance, but to get another suggestion to come out of the trance. In other words, to be like Dumbo coming out of the trance that he couldn't fly. Why can Dumbo fly? Not because of the feather, but because he has big ears. 
Now, let's assume for a moment when it comes to the bar exam that somewhere in our lives, most of us have accepted some suggestions about our ability, either from ourselves or from other people. And we've spent most of our lives reinforcing those ideas, typically through negative suggestion and repetition. Even the most successful among us have those areas of our lives. Unfortunately, there's a, a truth that is you get more of what you reinforce. That's certainly true when you think about the way the brain works. If you reinforce, for example, I'm no good at writing essays or writing generally, you get more of that. If you say instead of that, up until now, writing has been a challenge for me, and I'm curious about how um, writing and bar essay writing could become more easy, how I'm already using the writing concepts in my own life, and how could I translate that into learning complex concepts more easily? That's the better question to ask. That's the question that gives you the ability to come out of your hypnotic trance. Well, what happens when you start to do that is that you're going to find resources. You're going to find your magic feathers or your Timothys. For a lot of people, our course is one of those resources. We start telling you things that actually you knew, like use your common sense, don't memorize, don't recite. We're gonna tell you about new behaviors and generating new ways of, of working and thinking. We're gonna show you a different style of, of writing. We're gonna give you a style that's based on dealing with conflicts and disputes instead of elements and rules. It's one of the, the approaches that we take and we find ourselves drawn into people's lives. They often tell me, you know, I just knew there was something out there better than Iraq writing, for example, but I couldn't find it. Everybody I was talking to, everything I was hearing was telling me that I couldn't do it. Sort of like the crows uh, when they first met Dumbo and Timothy. And so what happens is we get traumatized by the process. Oh, I'm not good at writing. Or you could say at taking multiple choice tests or whatever it might be. And the reality is that instead of looking at the possibilities and the genius brain, we start thinking about what we can't do. Well, how do you get past all of that? How do you get through all of it? There's a lot of ways. One is you find uh, supportive people. You find a course like ours and a, an environment like ours where we support your genius brain instead of telling you you're not smart enough to do things. That's a huge step. And if you're not doing that right now, I think you're missing out. There are also some products and some uh, specific tools called paraliminal recordings. And I've talked about these in other places, but paraliminal recordings, which are uh, come to us from learning strategies, uh, we've curated a group of them specifically designed for bar takers. Now, the couple of those paraliminal recordings, which are literally two different soundtracks, one in one ear, the other in another ear, to kind of cross over uh, into your brain and uh, kind of get your conscious brain to check out for a while and talk to your non-conscious brain. But there are two paraliminal recordings that are really wonderful at putting you in touch with resources that are already within you, the genius resources, if you will, and then helping you to apply them when you're working. One of them is called, not surprisingly, Personal Genius. This is one of my favorite recordings in our set. Uh, it really lets you get at uh, overcoming negative suggestions in any area of your life, writing bar essays, taking standardized tests, doing multiple choice exams, whatever it might be. Um, it's definitely designed to help build your self-esteem as a learner. The other paraliminal recording, uh, which we would suggest after you've learned something, is called the memory supercharger. Now, to be clear, we don't uh, want people to memorize anything in this bar review course. However, we want you to learn the material through mind mapping, through photo reading, through working and uh, accessing the information. And we want you to be able to uh, consolidate that learning and so we have this second product called the Memory Supercharger. It comes with the photo reading course, uh, or you can add it uh, separately if you're not doing photo reading. But the idea is you do personal genius before you study and then Memory Supercharger after you study. So you're reinforcing the connection to your own studying and learning. Now, all of this is within the, the what uh, Paul calls the natural brilliance model. You release the stress, you relax, you notice new choices that are available to you when you're working, you respond to those new choices, and then you witness the results. That's a, called the natural brilliance model, and it's a terrific way of studying and working, and it's part of the methodology that our course is built on. But what you're really doing is reinitializing your capacity to learn, which means that now you're saying, you know what, I need to learn this, and I want to learn it. It makes sense to me. And now that you're able to do that, what you need to do is to apply the learning. You take what you've, you've learned and you apply it. You write a better essay. You answer better multiple choice questions. 
The natural brilliance approach assists you on an ongoing basis. It takes the little steps that are necessary to be successful. And what happens is that you begin to accelerate your acquisition of new information, new knowledge, and the acquisition of new skills simply by virtue of the fact that you are eliminating all the stop signs, all the taunting, all the bullying, all the other stuff that's been placing uh, in front of you up until now. Remember that in our story of Dumbo, he flies not because of the magic feather. He flies because he's got big ears. You know, we give you a lot of tools. You might call them magic feathers. Uh, they're designed to help you get at your basic skills. But at the end of the day, you have big ears. You can fly because you have big ears. You have skills and abilities because you have big ears. You are capable of writing essays or performance tests or doing multiple choice exams on the bar exam. You are capable of all of that. That's how you got out of law school. It's how you graduated. The problem is that most of us have walked around in a trance telling ourselves, hey, I can't do this, I'm not capable of this, I'm not good at this. And we have to change that mindset. We have to be able to start to release uh, all of that negative, all of those stop signs, and be able to really uh, fly. And when you fly, then you get the really fun part. You can shoot uh, you know, peanuts at the, uh, the clowns that were giving you tr uh, trouble before. And I can think of a lot of clowns in the, uh, the legal industry and the bar review world uh, that I would love to shoot some peanuts at. But beyond that, it, it's the opportunity for you to move to the next stage of your life. It's the opportunity to get your life back and to do the things post bar exam that you really wanna do. And all that's standing between you and that opportunity is your willingness to recognize that you have big ears, to let go, to dehypnotize yourself, and move on. Well, I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, look forward to hearing your stories of big ears and flying and all the cool stuff you can do when you stop telling yourself what's not possible and start recognizing what's really possible.